In this video, we're going to walk you through the steps necessary to provision your autonomous transaction processing database. We assume you've already signed up for a trial account um, or you have cloud credits. So you've got your tenancy information, your username and your password. Armed with this information, you should head over to cloud.oracle.com and you're going to click on the sign in link at the top of the page. Then you're going to enter your tenancy information. So in my case, that's RADB Cloud UCM. And then I'm going to click the My Services button. It's going to ask me now to log in with my username, which in my case is my email address and my password. Once you've done this, you're going to hit Sign In and it's going to open up the My Services uh, console for you. Once you're in the console, you'll see a number of different tiles in front of you, uh, giving you different options. Perhaps you're looking for a guided journey uh, or creating an instance. What I'm actually going to do, though, is jump up here to the left hand side to the hamburger menu there, um, and I'm going to click on that. Underneath that, I'm going to click on services. And what that's going to do is give me a list of all of the different services that I could potentially create. And I'm going to scroll down on that list until I get to the autonomous database. Let's click on that. And what it's going to do is send me over to um, the cloud infrastructure site. And from here again, I'm going to go to the hamburger menu on the left hand side. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to scroll down to the autonomous transaction processing because I'm interested in creating a autonomous transaction database here. Now, when I get here, you can obviously see the big blue button that says uh, create autonomous transaction processing. But before you jump to that, you may also want to consider changing your compartment. When you've got multiple folks sharing a cloud tenancy, you may want to use compartments to separate out the different users in that tenancy so that they can uh, have their own compartments so they don't see each other's databases or perhaps you're doing it on a departmental basis. Um, but I'm, I'm sharing my compartment with Gerald Wenzel, my colleague. So I'm in the right compartment, but if I needed to change them, I could just use those little arrows there to look at the list of compartments that I have open to me. If this is your first time using the cloud service, you'll actually have to create a compartment before you create the autonomous transaction processing database. But again, we'll guide you through all of that should that be needed. So since I already have a compartment, let's go ahead and click on the create autonomous transaction processing. What it's going to do is open a form that has five simple questions that I need to answer in order to create my database. First thing it wants to know is the display name. So let's give it a name. I'm going to call it autonomous TP. Um, I also then need to give the database a name. You can call it whatever you want uh, on both of these, but I like to keep them the same. It makes it easier for me to remember which is which. Uh, you then need to tell us how many CPU cores you want. By default, you get one, um, but you can increase that to anything up to 128 CPU cores and how much storage you want. So I'm going to say I would like uh, four CPUs and one terabyte of storage is plenty. I then need to create the admin uh, credentials. So there's going to be an admin user created for this particular autonomous transaction processing database. We need to give that user a password. Um, Oracle's got some strict criteria about what those passwords should be. And it will flash up there on the screen as you saw um, while I'm typing it in until I meet all of those criteria. Um, then it does a little check to make sure that your password when you confirm it does match the original password. Last thing I need to do is look at what licensing type I'm bringing with this. Oracle uh, Autonomous Database gives you the ability to bring your on-premise licenses uh, to the Oracle Cloud. So I can bring my existing on-premises licenses to the cloud for this if my organization already has them or I can subscribe to a new database uh, software license as part of the service. 
Uh, since my organization already has Oracle database software licenses, I'm going to leave it at the default. I can also use some tags to identify different databases within a tenancy, um, but I'm not going to bother with that. It's not required, and I'm simply going to hit the create autonomous uh, transaction processing at the end there and let that go. It's going to take just a few moments for the autonomous transaction processing database to be provisioned. While you wait, you're redirected to the screen we were at previously. You now see my new service that's uh, been named there, Autonomous TP. You also see the current state, which is provisioning. You see the database name, the number of CPUs, and the amount of storage that's been allocated to it. In just a few moments, you'll see that the screen has refreshed and the autonomous TP instance that I created now has a status of available. So we can head on in and click on that, which will give us more information about this particular instance. So at this point, you're ready to start beginning to use your autonomous transaction processing database. For more information on Oracle Autonomous Transaction Processing, please check out my blog at sqlmaria.com or follow me on Twitter or Facebook.